So let's look at the introductory section to this um, dramatic monologue. We have in the opening lines Macbeth using this repetition. If it were done, tis done. Then to were done, then it were well, it were done quickly. So this repetition, I think, shows us his hesitancy and uncertainty about his own motives and consequences. Because what he means, if it were if the consequences were over when the action was actually carried out, then it would be a good thing to do it quickly. And this is what he means. And this is, I think the key part here is the fact that he repeats this single word. If it were done when it is done, then it will well it were done quickly. The fact that this word means something different in each of these repetitions, I think, is what gives us that sense of uncertainty about his own motives and his own decision making. Because we get this instability of the meaning of the word through this particular repetition. So we, we first of all see if it were if the action were over when it's physically completed, then it would be a good thing to do it quickly. It means something different in each of these three cases, and that's where the uncertainty comes from. He follows this with a really powerful image about um, the act of killing. He says, if the assassination could trammel up the consequence. Now, trammel here is a type of net that you'd use to catch something with. So he means if the act of killing could catch in a net all the consequences of the murder. That personification here of the act of killing asks it to catch the consequences and shows his what we call his prevarication, his um, uncertainty and his, his putting off of the decision that to, to murder Duncan. He wants in this image the, the action itself to catch all of the consequences. So he's looking again for that hypothetical unreality where murdering a king would have no consequences. And then it says, if the assassination could trammel up the consequence and catch with his surcease success. And here what he means, that the act of killing could catch with its ending, its surcease. That means it for it to be open, to be, for it to be over, sorry. If it could catch with its ending success. That there, I think, is antithetical. We don't normally think of something surcease, something surceasing, something ending being successful. And I think that the alliteration and the, the sound echo in both of these words, the sibilant alliteration and the sound echo, it says cease and success, in two words that mean something very different, shows us again the fact of mortality and I think the, the, the juxtaposition of ending with success shows us the tension in his thinking, that he's equating somehow death with success, shows us that he is uncertain about the way that Lady Macbeth thinks about things where mm. killing the king is just a simple um, s sign of ambition. Here, that success, that ambition is, is allied to mortality, to the surcease of life. Then he goes on and says, that but this blow might be the be all and end all, here but here. So he said, there's lots of plosives in here, the B and D sounds here, the but this blow might be the be all and end all. That this physical action that he's talking about might end all of the consequences of this action. I think the plosive alliteration in this sound suggests, I think, the violence of his anticipated action. He then moves on to this very complex metaphor to describe life itself. He says, the be all and end all, and then there is this dash that shows the hesitancy. Here, but here, upon this bank and shoal of time, we jump the life to come. So here, he says, if we could end the consequences of this murder, here, upon this bank and shoal of time, this is a metaphor for life. And a bank and shoal of time, he means a sandbar in terms of time, which is narrow in comparison to eternity. So a bank and shoal of time, he imagines the actual mortal life of a human being, being like standing on a little sandbar in the sea, surrounded by this great ocean of eternity. If we could do this in this life, we jump the life to come. We would risk all of eternity to make sure that just our life on the bank and shoal of time would be a success. So this metaphor here of, of, of mortal life being 
a, someone standing on a sandbar that's narrow in comparison to this sort of vast ocean of eternity shows us the extent that he would be willing to risk his eternity purely if we could be certain that there would be no consequences of um, a murderous action like this. But of course, that's not the case. And then we move on in the second section to see how this changes. <laughs> 